On today's Undercover Boss, prepare for an episode that will blow you away as we follow the journey of one of the youngest CEOs of the world as he goes undercover within his own company. Brace yourselves as he encounters the unsung heroes who silently shape the success of his organization. Stay with us to see what happens when this CEO, for the very first time on the history of Undercover Boss, gets fired. Michael Rubin is the founder and CEO of GSI Commerce. GSI Commerce is an e-commerce business which handles merchandising and shipping to other large companies and organizations like the NFL and MLB. GSI creates the websites for the products and they then store and ship the product directly to the customers. And this means that most online shoppers have used GSI systems to get their products. Mike loved business since he was a little boy and when he was 8 years old he sold stationery door to door and by the time he was 14 he opened his own ski shop Shop, and by the time he was 21, he had a business making $100 million. Being the CEO of a fast-running company, Mike is always working, and he mostly never has time to spend with his wife and daughter. He is an obsessed man, always trying to reach the next big goal. Mike has been thinking of a way to improve his business, and he came up with the idea to go undercover in his company. During the peak seasonal time for the company, he calls a meeting with his board members and reveals to them that he would be going undercover for a week. I'm stepping down as the CEO of GSI Commerce for next week, yeah. not in total. <laughs> Everyone is surprised at first, but he explains to them that it will be good for the company. Mike will be going undercover as Gary, and his workers will be told that he's taking part in a TV show about seasonal jobs. He's a little nervous, as he's always been his own boss, and working under people might be a little challenging for him. For his first job, he flies to Richwood, Kentucky to work in the fulfillment center where they pack thousands of orders daily to be sent to customers. He meets with Matt who works as a floor supervisor and he takes him to a seasonal worker, Rochelle, and she teaches him how to load the trucks with the boxes. The job is very intense as the boxes come fast, but they manage to keep up with the load together. But as they were moving the boxes, Mike accidentally hits Rochelle on the face. I feel like we're getting... Oh! Oh, you okay? No, not really. <laughs> Just be careful. They then start doing the much more easier task of stacking boxes, and Mike sees Rochelle using new techniques to speed up the work and be more productive. He's impressed to see a seasonal worker who will not be here the next season working that hard to increase the efficiency of the company. After Mike was done with his first day of work, he was exhausted, and when he first came here he thought the job would be easy and that he would impress everyone, but he now knows just how hard it is and how hard his employees have to work to grow this company. The next day, Mike travels to Florida to work in the call centers, and GSI receives more than 20 million calls a year, so it's important that the calls go well. He meets up with Adam, who takes customer complaint calls, and Mike just listens in for a few calls and sees how it's done. Mike was impressed with Adam's work, and when his turn came to take the calls, with some help from Adam, Mike accepts the calls and resolves the various issues of the customers. On their break, Mike learns that Adam has been working for a year after he had to leave his previous job because he lost his daughter during childbirth and because he was absent that day, Adam was fired. Uh, I ended up losing my daughter. And the day that I lost my daughter, I was unable to go in and work that Black Friday. And just due to that, they, uh, they said that my services were no longer needed. After the break, Mike sits with Danielle and takes the next customer call, which was a lot harder than before since the customer was not budging for his offer, and Danielle gets impatient and puts the customer on hold. She then takes the call and gets into an argument with the customer. May I speak now? Ma'am, ma'am, Elizabeth, not, not you're not letting me talk. You're not letting me talk, so I can't help you, Elizabeth. I'm sorry that you're having a hard time. Mike gets visibly upset by Danielle's behavior and the way she treated the customer and almost blew his cover. The call ends without getting resolved as the customer gets frustrated and just hangs up, and then Mike steps outside and lets out his anger. I went from heartbroken to extreme frustration and anger. Not what I expect of my employees. For his next job, he travels back to Richwood, Kentucky to work in the fulfillment center to work as a box patcher, and he meets with packing supervisor Greg, who immediately takes him to the packing area. He is put alongside Shannon, who teaches him how to pack, and Shannon is very fast and she does double the work. Mike is impressed with her speed and tries to follow under her, but it doesn't really go well as he only does half the requirement. During their lunch break, they talk about family, and he learns that Shannon works seven days a week to help her family out. On their next shift, Gary comes back with Mike's pack boxes, which had multiple problems. He tells him that he's not reaching the requirement and fires Mike on the spot. Between the issues with the boxes and, and your numbers, uh, we no longer need your services. Nothing I can do. No. 
Mike is shocked as he just got fired and he feels embarrassed about his performance and notes how hard the job is and he then thanks Shannon before leaving. And although Mike just got fired, his undercover time is still going and the next day he travels to another fulfillment center in Louisville, Kentucky to work on a night shift. Mike is determined to work this job well and he meets up with Cameron and he shows him how boxes are located and picked from their shelves. Mike follows suit for the first few orders and on their breaks, Mike meets Cameron's young daughter who has come to work with him. Hey baby. <laughs> Cameron doesn't get to see his daughter as much as he wants to, but he tries to make time whenever he can. On their next shift, Mike and Cameron start a competition on who can do certain tasks faster. And unsurprisingly, Cameron wins by a big margin, but they both have fun. And finally, Mike's undercover time has come to an end, and he's learned a lot during his time undercover, and one of the things that he's learned is to spend more time with his family. And he gained this perspective after he met Cameron and Adam. And next, Mike calls his employees to a GSI building to reveal his true identity. First in was Rochelle, who impressed him by her hard work, and he tells her that he's proud of her and offers her a full-time job at the company, and Rochelle is thankful for her new job and hugs Mike. Next in was Cameron, and he tells him that he admires both his work ethic and his dedication to raising his daughter right, and he gives him a thousand dollar gift card to get his daughter a great Christmas gift, and offers him a promotion in the company, and Cameron, teary-eyed, thanks Mike for the opportunity. Next was Shannon. I'm not actually Gary. I'm Michael Rubin, the founder and CEO of the company. <laughs> and he gives her $5,000 so she can spend it on her son. Next in was Danielle, and Mike was not happy with her, and now that she's in front of him, she apologizes and Mike gives her another chance, and promises to give better training to all employees so that this doesn't happen again. And on her way out, she promises that she will do great next time. Last in was Adam, and he tells him that he was blown away with his work ethic and attitude to customers, and he tells him that he was heartbroken with the story of losing his daughter, and it's made Mike reconsider his priorities in life. You know, one of the things that you talked about, saving money to get married, I know it's something you've been waiting to do. I'd like to put $10,000 toward your wedding. Adam is speechless by this, and he thanks Mike for his generosity. <laughs> I, 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 I'm i speechless. Mike also wanted to share his experience with other employees, so he arranges his town hall to talk about his experience. He shows them highlights of his undercover time, and he gives a speech and promises to make the company better for everyone. He then thanks his employees before ending the event, and in the weeks since, all of Rochelle's hard work has paid off, and she now has a full-time position at the company. Cameron is on his way to becoming a supervisor, and he's attending a GSI leadership conference that spring, and his daughter also had the best Christmas ever. Shannon has put the $5,000 to good use and is helping her son's football team. Danielle underwent customer service retraining and she's no longer with the company. And lastly, Adam and his fiance are planning their dream wedding. And that is how this delightful episode of Undercover Boss comes to an end.